If you fly tiny whoops, then you have probably long since resigned yourself to the terrible range and crappy latency of the built-in SPI-based receiver on many tiny whoop flight controllers. And today I'm gonna to tell you how to fix that. But no, this is not a video about go out and buy Express LRS and put Express LRS on it. This is not a video where you are gonna to have to spend any money because this flight controller already has a better protocol built in. And if you have a multi-protocol module, like the module built into the RadioMaster TX-16S or many other popular radios, it also has it already built in. If that's you, I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. The protocol that we're talking about today is called Redpine. And the exciting thing about Redpine is that it runs at 666 hertz. Extremely Christian people, you're gonna stay away from this one. <clears throat> For the rest of us, 666 hertz gives a latency of between one and five milliseconds from the transmitter gimbal to the Betaflat d shot motor output, compared with seven to 20 milliseconds for Crossfire on Tyrannus, or 18 to 37 milliseconds with FreeSky X on Tyrannus. That's faster even than some Immersion RC Ghost, actually all Immersion RC Ghost, and all but the experimental Express LRS, which is running at one kilohertz. That's faster than any of these high-end protocols, and it's built into this stupid little tiny whoop flight controller. It's already there. And the reason they can get away with this is that that flight controller has a built-in, it's called a CC2500 chip, and it is a RF chip, it's a radio chip. And that is the chip that does the talking, the, the wireless radio stuff. And basically, Betaflight talks to that chip and it tells it what to do. So when you go into Betaflight and you see SPI receiver support, that means that the receiver is being controlled by the Betaflight software. And the exact protocol that it uses is set here. You can change from FreeSky X, which is D16 mode, to FreeSky D, which is D8 mode, and so on. But the key thing is that you can change the protocol that the receiver talks simply by changing that pull down there. Now, some of you are going to think that we could change from free sky to spectrum. And in fact, for a long time, I thought that. I thought that you could change between fly sky, free sky, any of these protocols willy nilly. It's just an SPI based software controlled radio. And that is actually not true. The CC2500 chip that is on this particular flight controller does the FreeSky protocols. And there's another chip that's used for Spectrum and another chip that's used for FlySky. So they're all there, but you can't do them all. But if you have an SPI FreeSky receiver with the CC2500 chip, you can, boop, do the Red Pine protocol here in Betaflight. Betaflight just supports it. Well, Betaflight 4.2. If you've got an older whoop with 4.1 on it, you're gonna need to upgrade to 4.2. Betaflight 4.2 and newer, boom, set it to Red Pine. Save and reboot, you're halfway there. Next, we're gonna get our radio, and in this case, we do have a radio with a built-in multi-protocol module. The multi-protocol module support the Red Pine protocol, and that's gonna be the main way that you're gonna take advantage of that today. They, I believe that they used to like flash Red Pine to free sky radios. I'm not sure, it was all before my time. I never got into it, and frankly, I'm not sure I would jump through those hoops just to get Red Pine today. To me, the big appeal is that it's like all there ready to go, and all you gotta do is set it up, and suddenly you have better performance. So I'm gonna press the model key to go to model setup. And then I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna set, in this case, it's the internal module because I have an internal multi-protocol module. If you had an external multi-protocol module like in the JR Bay your radio, you would go to external. The mode is gonna be set to multi, multi and the RF protocol is going to be set to Red Pine. Just like that. And then we just gotta bind it and like, we're done, right? Now binding the receiver may be a little bit tricky. On the radio, of course, you've got the bind button here. It's just like binding any other protocol. But on the flight controller, it may not be that simple. Now, the way that you're probably gonna bind is you're gonna go to your CLI tab and you're gonna type bind. Oh, oops, I have a problem. See, on some flight controllers, they've built into Betaflight a command in the CLI. Sometimes it's bind. Sometimes it's bind underscore RX, depending on, oh, oh, that one worked. Why didn't it autocomplete? 
Sometimes it's bind underscore rx underscore spi. I don't know what it is in every case. If you've installed Betaflight Configurator 10.8.0 because you're getting ready for Betaflight 4.3, then in the lower right hand corner of the receiver tab, you may see a bind receiver button. And the beautiful thing about this button is that if your flight controller has software-based binding built in, that button will activate it. You don't have to fish around in the CLI tab trying to figure out whether it's bind or bind RX or whatever. But you may not see that down there. And in fact, on one of the quadcopters I tried, when I selected Free Sky, the bind button was there, but when I selected Red Pine, it was gone. So we're gonna try and bind it the normal way, but then I'm gonna show you a workaround if your bind button disappears that may help you out. Mm, nothing happened here when I hit bind receiver. There's no indication that we've gone into bind mode. Let's just try to hit bind on the uh, module and see what happens. Binding, oh, there, that's a good sign. Yeah, it started blinking, right? So clearly something's going on there. And now it's solid and and we have movement in the sticks. Yay, it worked. Fantastic. At this point, we do the standard things that we always do when we're setting up a model. For example, I can see that my endpoints are way off. They're not 1,000 to 2,000. So I'm going to set my endpoints, check my channel mapping, check my aux modes, and so forth, and do all that stuff. In addition, I do believe that you still need to do the RF frequency fine tune, like you do on all CC2500 radios uh, with a multi-protocol module. Um, what you do to the frequency fine tune is, fine. you know what, there's videos out there saying how to do it. I'll just link it in the video description. I'm not gonna repeat that here. Now, before you go crazy with this, there is one more gotcha, and that is that Red Pine only uses a single bit, one bit for its aux channels. And that means that each aux channel is only a two position channel. You cannot have three position switches. You cannot have sliders or potentiometers. Everything is either on or off. And if that's not gonna work for you, then Red Pine's not gonna work for you. Go back to D8 and your, your crappy latency. Blah. But if you're able to make that work, it's gonna give you much lower latency and you're gonna be really amazed at how much better it feels to fly your tiny whoop. Joshua from the future here. Uh, Red Pine also doesn't have telemetry. Not sure how I forgot to mention that when I was making this video. No telemetry. So if you use telemetry, Red Pine's not for you. That's one of the things they cut out in order to get the latency of the protocol as low as possible. Whoop. The other thing to keep in mind is that because of Red Pine's much faster bit rate, the range of Red Pine is actually slightly lower than the FreeSky D8 protocol. I know. I was hoping we were going to get faster and better range, and it's just not the case. So uh, it should be still enough for a 25 milliwatt video transmitter, you would hope, but if you're already hitting the edge of your range on D8, switching to Red Pine will actually give you slightly less, and you certainly wanna be aware of that. That's gonna do it for this video though. I hope that there's a bunch of people out there who had never heard of Red Pine, despite the fact that guys like Albert Kim and pro probably Nick Burns I don't know, despite the fact that other people have covered it before, I never had, and uh, my brush with it, going to the whoop race, was like, I gotta, get the, I gotta do my part to get the word out here, because you probably have this already in your tiny whoop. You could be using it with your multi-protocol module, and you just don't know. And the difference is really astounding. Between 37 milliseconds and five milliseconds, it is, it's, it's astounding, so assuming you're able to get it working on your tiny wood. But hey, you know, nothing lost if you try it. Just go back to Free Sky D8 and get on with your day. Thank you so much for watching. That's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed this content, if you found this content helpful, I hope you'll consider joining my Patreon. There's a link down in the video description to Patreon, which is a website where you can subscribe to me for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it. If that's not you today, keep watching content. I help everybody for free in emails, in chats, in YouTube comments, and in YouTube videos. My motto is to give it all away for free, and one day, hopefully, you will feel like signing up. If today's that day for you, the link's down in the video description, and I sure do appreciate it. Happy flying. What are you doing in here? The least you could do is subscribe or join my Patreon or like just here's another video I picked out for you. Jeez.